Hello everyone. Happy evening. A very good evening. I hope and I believe all of you are doing very well. So welcome to our C3 with N3 episode 3 that is cheat codes and concepts with Dr. Nikita Nanwani Nathani. So uh, before I proceed with the session where we are going to discuss some very easy tips and tricks to remember the cheat codes to remember the various splints. Can you please give me a quick nod in the live chat whether the audio visual is all good so that we can go ahead with the session. Hi, happy evening, Bindu, Abhishek, Jonathan, Honey. Is the audio visual all good? Can you please give me a quick nod? Thank you, Shiva Pranil, for that uh, nod. So I hope all of you are also aware that there are many free sessions going on on an academy learning app as well. So I have taken two sessions on FMG final punch last minute revision in the last week and you have two more sessions coming up. So I'll see you tomorrow in a free session again on the an academy app 26 August 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. So please remember that these sessions are not useful only for the FMG candidates but also for need PG candidates as well. So make the best of these sessions where I'll discuss discuss uh, mixed bag subjects high yielding topics very very important for last minute revision alongside that the plus subscribers please make note your next class is on 27th of august toxicology session 4 so we are having dedicated course on toxicology cheat codes we are done with three out of six sessions session four is on 27th august and after that we have also started with the radiology concise course you have your next class coming up on 29th august where you have four hour session on radiology so for students who are subscribing to an academy can use the referral code for additional discount and i'm hoping to see you all there also, there is very, I hope, uh, I believe all of you are waiting for Con Benega MD, the episode, final episode of this month, where we will be discussing anti cancer drugs, 15 questions from you know, least difficult to most difficult. That would be on the last day of this month, that is 31st August. So please make note of all these sessions. You have both free sessions and for the plus subscribers as well. So this is a quick review of what you have. So today is what we are doing your C3 with N3, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 1. So you have sessions every day from my side and I hope to see you all there. Tomorrow 6 p.m. is your FMG final punch part 3 which is a free session. So what are we going to discuss in our today's session? It's a quick short session but a very very important session. So we will see this entire list. So when, once you see this list there are some 17 to 20 splints. There are some 17 to 20 splints. When you see this table you get scared but I'll try my best to make this table as easy as possible for all of you. So I assure you that the, at the end of the session all of you will be very well versed with the splints. There are approximately 20 splints that we would be seeing. Right. So we'll come to this table later on. We'll see the images also and we'll see how to identify and where are they used. OK, so all ready for that. Let's go. Yes, Geeky Mohan. I know that the table is scary, but at the end it won't be at all. So number one splint. Can someone identify what the splint is? What the splint is? Yes, anyone? So I give you a clue that this is a splint. You can see it's very malleable. You can use it anywhere in any part of the body. So basically you can use it for emergency conditions. Suppose on the roadside you find someone in a road traffic accident and there is, you know, suspecting fracture. So for emergency immobilization, temporary immobilization, you can use this. No, Jashwit, this is not the Thomas. Very good, Arup. This is your Kramer wire splint. So this is your Kramer wire splint. The use is, as I told you, basically it is for emergency immobilization for temporary basis till you take the patient to the hospital for definitive treatment. Now, how do we remember this? Now you can see it's a wire which is crammed up. So there are two bars and you can see the wire which is crammed up in between the two bars. So this is your crammed wire. That is how you can remember. And when do we cram? Now suppose I tell you suddenly that you have your need PG exam tomorrow. So all of you will start panicking and what will you do? You always start cramming up 
in you know whatever you have to read for the exam so what do we do in emergency conditions when you have exam on your head we just start cramming up right so cramming is done in emergency so crammer wire splint is used for emergency immobilization so please see here it is all you have two bars and you have the crammed wires in between the two bars various sizes that's your crammer wire splint all right next one first make a diagnosis here what do you see what what has happened to this hand what is happening here what is the diagnosis yes what is the diagnosis here this is your normal upper limb this is your abnormal what do you see here what's happening very good akansha asha absolutely right so this is wrist drop so you see left wrist drop here now tell me which nerve is affected here this is seen wrist drop is seen in which nerve palsy wrist drop is seen in which nerve palsy we have seen the cheat code to remember what is the cheat code to remember upper limb doctor kuma right there is doctor kuma what do we mean by doctor kuma so wrist drop drop is seen in radial nerve palsy claw hand is seen in ulnar nerve palsy if you have to choose one otherwise total claw hand is both ulnar and median nerve and median nerve palsy causes ape thumb or ape hand deformity right so absolutely right this is your radial nerve palsy this is your radial nerve palsy so what what will be the splint that you will use so to correct the wrist drop you will use a splint which takes this wrist up passively because the patient cannot do it actively so what will be the splint that you will use in wrist drop you want to take the wrist up so you will use a up splint which is your cock up splint so this is your cock up splint so very very important question cock up splint is used in radial nerve palsy because radial nerve palsy causes wrist drop right so where do we see here this is where you see your the wrist drop which is corrected by the splint you can see the splint going from your palmar crease your palmar crease and up to the forearm the two third of the forearm so this is called as your cock up splint so if you get a question cock up splint is used for radial nerve palsy because radial nerve palsy causes wrist drop easy to remember right no knuckle bender is not here geeky monam i'll come to that knuckle bender we'll see next what is the diagnosis here what do you see here what is the patient having what is this this is absolutely right this is the claw hand this is claw hand what causes claw hand we just saw the mnemonic doctor kuma so if one choice i have to make where i can see these fingers affected claw hand is seen in ulnar nerve palsy right so why do you see the claw hand claw hand is due to which muscles getting paralyzed which muscles are not functioning well that is why you get the claw hand what is the muscle which is paralyzed yes it is the lumbricals it is the lumbricals which are gone absolutely right now if i ask you what is the action of lumbricals muscle is it extension at mcp flexion at pip extension at both flexion at both flexion at mcp extension at pip what will be the answer to that what is the action of lumbricals muscle at the metacarpophalangeal joint and at the interphalangeal joint hi good evening anura good evening absolutely right so it's very very easy to remember the action of lumbricals this is a favorite question with examiners so lumbricals like your alphabet l okay like your alphabet l let me show you the image this is the image where you see so like your alphabet l as you can see here this is what is the function of lumbricals so as soon as i say action of lumbricals your hand should go like this so you can see flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint and extension at the interphalangeal joint why do you get the claw hand because it's happening opposite you see flexion at the interphalangeal joint and extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint so to correct this deformity what will we do we because here the action of lumbricals is gone so the knuckles are not bending so we want to bend the knuckles 
So we will use this knuckle bender splint. Can you see this L wala form like your lumbrical scar action? Because knuckle bender splint is used for ulnar nerve palsy which claw causes claw hand which is due to lumbrical muscles getting affected. So you will bend the knuckles. This is where you see the knuckles. These are the knuckles and we are bending the knuckles because we want the action of lumbricals, right? So this is your knuckle bender splint which is used in your ulnar nerve palsy. The term also helps you to remember knuckle bender is used in ulnar nerve palsy, right? It is used in ulnar nerve palsy. Next one. Yes, tell me what splint is this? What do you think? What splint is this? What position do you see here? Very good Sudha, absolutely right. So this is your aeroplane splint. This is the aeroplane splint. And where do we use this aeroplane splint? Aeroplane splint is used in Brachial plexus injury. It is used in brachial plexus injury. Absolutely right. Now, how do we remember if you get this image, identify the splint? Now, I'm sure all, my, all of you during the childhood wo paper ka aeroplane bana ke udaya hoga, right? So, jab hum wo paper ka aeroplane when we try to, you know, usko udane ki koshish karte hai. So, this is what, imagine that this is the position that you are using, okay? So, this position is used for aeroplane. So, this is your aeroplane splint, which is used in, obviously, we are using the brachial plexus ka nerves. Upper limb is all brachial plexus. So it is used in brachial plexus injury. So you just have to remember aeroplane. Bachpan mein jo udaya hai, haath se udate hai, to brachial plexus injury mein use karte hai. Next one, tell me, what splint is this? What splint is this? Yes, you can also call this as a uh, right Bhagwan Morley that you can use it in axillary nerve palsy as well because you can see that in the splint we are keeping the arm in the abducted position. Axillary nerve supplies the deltoid which is an abductor. So axillary nerve may you will do abduction like you are seeing here. Okay. What splint is this? Mallet finger splint. Okay. It is used for the finger pathologies, right? But the splint is called as aluminium splint. Okay. So you can see the splint aluminium made up of aluminium. So it is used in the finger pathologies. So basically it is used in phalangeal fracture and other finger pathologies. So aluminium splint is used in the finger pathologies. Next one. So this is a bit funny one. What is this? Which splint is this? So splint basically means immobilization. So by connecting the two shoes, you are immobilizing the movement of the patient. Yes, Dr. Happiness, it is for CTEV. Very good, Sudha. This is Dennis Brown splint. This is your Dennis Brown splint. Now, why have I put this image? Because this is a singer which is whose name is Dennis Brown. And just keep this image in your mind of Dennis Brown where you see, look at his feet. Okay, look at the abnormal position of his feet. Abnormal position of feet, matlab CTEV, right? So you have telepus equino varus, the feet are abnormal. So you are giving that Dennis Brown splint for the feet. You can see the shoes. So obviously it is used for the feet ka position, which is CTEV. So remember, Dennis Brown is the singer who's sitting in this abnormal position. The feet are abnormal, which is CTEV. All right. Next one. Tell me what splint is this? What splint is this? Just look at the splint and look at what is the what is the splint trying to do. Very good, Jashweet Dharani, absolutely right. So you can see that with the splint, we are trying to take the foot up. So where will we use this splint? In foot drop. So this is your toe raising splint. As you can see, we are taking the foot up. So like we used, what splint did we use in the wrist drop? Cock up splint. So similarly here you are raising the toe because the toes are going down. So toe raising splint. So it will be used in which condition? Foot drop. 
Now tell me, foot drop is due to which nerve involvement? So it will be used in which nerve palsy? Foot drop is due to foot drop is due to absolutely right common peroneal nerve palsy so it will be used in common peroneal nerve palsy common peroneal is a branch of sciatic nerve so even sciatic nerve palsy right so we know foot drop is seen in your common peroneal nerve palsy all right so this is your toe raising splint next one identify this splint very very easy and very frequently asked what splint is this This is a very easy and a basic one. The first splint that you read is your Thomas splint. Absolutely right. That is the Thomas splint. So Thomas splint, if you get a question, was first used for which condition? The options are fracture neck of femur, fracture shaft of femur, fixed flexion deformity of hip or tuberculosis of knee. It was first used for which condition? Absolutely right, Jashwit knows it. So it was first used for TB knee by Thomas. So that is why Thomas splint. So remember, it was used for TB knee. So Thomas was used for TB knee. Now, in your Thomas splint, next question which is asked, you have a ring and you have the two bars, the inner bar and the outer bar. Which bar has a curve? The outer bar has a curve. Why do you want a curve on the outer bar? To accommodate this extra trochanter here, the bada trochanter, which is the greater trochanter. Okay. So to accommodate this, it has a curve on the outer side. The next question, what is the angle between the ring and the inner bar? It is 120 degrees. Okay. The angle is 120 degrees. The curve is present on the outer bar to accommodate the greater trochanter. Right. So now this again uh, is your... Thomas splint, where you can see the ring, the bars. Now this bar, is it the outer bar or is it the inner bar? This bar, is it the outer or is the, it is the inner? You can see a bend, a curve here. So this becomes your outer bar. This becomes your inner bar. The angle here is 120 degrees. So this is your Thomas splint. Now, so what is the use of Thomas splint? Where is the Thomas splint used? So the mnemonic to remember, Thomas is used in thigh conditions. So fracture femur anywhere. So all your thigh conditions, you will use Thomas splint. All right. So this is where you see, this is how we wear the Thomas splint. You have the ring going here. You have the two bars here, a curve in the outer bar to accommodate the greater trochanter. You can see the ring there. So Thomas splint is used for thigh car conditions. What is the other splint which is used for fracture femur? Which is the other splint which is used for fracture femur? This is that splint. What is the name of the splint? Nine. Gallows traction. This is your bowler brawn splint. This is your bowler brawn splint where how do you identify the bowler brawn now bowler brawn it has three pulleys as you can see one two and three it has three pulleys one two and three okay so remember that bowler brawn has three pulleys that is how you identify your uh, bowler bronze splint. So this is again used for the thigh as I will show you this image you'll remember. So you have the three pulleys, proximal pulley, this pulley and the distal pulley. Now what are the functions of the three pulleys? You can see that the first pulley here is taking the foot up. So it prevents the foot drop, the proximal pulley. The second pulley you can see here, it is in line with the femur. So the second pulley gives traction in line with femur. The third pulley which you see here, this is the third pulley. It is in line with the leg. So the third pulley is traction in line with the leg. Okay. So these are the functions to prevent the foot drop. One is in line with the femur. One is with line with the leg. And one is to prevent the foot drop. So three pulleys, bowler bronze splint, again used for, you can see it is used for the leg condition. That is the fracture femur. Okay. But if the question is bowler's angle, Bowler's angle. Where is bowler's angle used? 
Bowler's angle is used for which fracture? We have seen a cheat code where we saw the story. Bowler's angle, Gisane angle, lover's fracture. Yes, absolutely right. So it is your fracture calcaneus. So remember bowler angle is calcaneus fracture and bowler bronze splint is fracture femur. So this is bowler bronze splint. What is this one? What is this one? Obviously, we can see that this is for the neck. It is used for immobilization of neck. You can see in the image. So this is used for neck immobilization. Is it the Somi brace? Is it the Ash brace? Is it Milwaukee? Is it Boston? What is it? What is it? So what you see in this brace, how many, you know, the extensions are coming? You can see one. Two, three, and four. So four are hai. So isko bolte hai four post collar. So collar we know is for the neck. So this is used for neck immobilization. Yes, absolutely right, Dharani. Very good. This is Sudha Arup. This is not Somi or Milwaukee. I'll show you those images. So you see the four lines. So this is the four post. So these are the four pillars, the four post. So this is your four post collar for neck immobilization. Next one. So I think from the image here, you'll be able to diagnose. If not this, at least you can see this image. What brace is this? What brace is this? You can see from the image, right? What am I trying to show here? Very good. Absolutely right. So that is your Somi brace. So Somi brace. So what am I trying to show you? Somi say remember sumo. So you can see the sumos. Right? And how are they fighting? Look at the sumo who's holding the neck of the other sumo. Okay? So, somi brace is also used for cervical spine. It is also used for, this is somi brace is also used for the cervical spine. And you can see that it extends up to the thorax. What is the full form of somi? Somi is sternal, occipital, mandibular, immobilization. So this is what exactly is your SOMI. So you have sternum, you have occipital, you have mandibular. So you have sternum, occipital and mandibular. So that is why this is your SOMI brace. Okay, this is your SOMI brace. So just remember this image. Again, it is used for your cervical spine uh, injuries. That is your SOMI brace. Remember that unlike your four post, four post may you have four lines, ya pe four nahi hai, ye teeni hai. Out of that you have occipital, one is mandible and then they are going to the sternum. So sternum, occipital, mandible, immobilization. So you have here also, you have peach also and you have in the sternum. Alright. Next one, which brace is this? Which brace is this? Yes, so you can see that this is being used for scoliosis. So which are the braces that we use for scoliosis? So remember that for scoliosis, we can use Milwaukee brace or we can use Boston brace. These are the most important ones for you to remember for the exam. So how do we remember that these are used for scoliosis? Now, why is Milwaukee brace called Milwaukee? Because it was first, you know, made there. There's a place called Milwaukee. So after the place. Boston is also a place. And scoliosis say you can remember Scotland. So remember the three places. That is Scotland, Milwaukee and Boston. These are the three places, three cities. So Scotland is scoliosis. What is the angle which we measure in scoliosis? Again from Scotland, scoliosis, CO, remember we use Cobb's angle. So Cobb's angle is used in scoliosis. It is used in scoliosis, right? So the three places, Scotland, Milwaukee and Boston. Now you have Milwaukee brace and you have Boston. How do you differentiate the two? So this is your Milwaukee brace. And the next one which I show you, this is the Boston brace. Okay, this is the Boston brace. So how do you remember this is? Now, Milwaukee, as you can see, Milwaukee, when you write M, you have this vertical line. 
So Milwaukee has this vertical line in the front, in the center. So that is your Milwaukee brace. The braces which are used for scoliosis, of course, they will cover the entire spine. So you can see they are going from the neck till the niche. They will cover the entire spine. So that is how you identify these are for scoliosis. The one which has the line, like your alphabet M, that would be Milwaukee. The one which you see here, you know, this is like a dress. Imagine a female, a very pretty female in Boston, right? Boston, pretty females wearing this off shoulder, wearing like this off shoulder dresses. So you have this off shoulder dress. So this is in Boston. So Boston may pretty girl wearing this off shoulder brace, which is your Boston brace. All right. So this is the Boston brace. And this one is your Milwaukee brace where you have M one center may ek line aara hai jo. Okay. So this was about scoliosis. This was about scoliosis. What is this? What am I trying to show you here? I, I am sure all of you know the one personality here. Who can identify both of them? Who are these two celebrities? Who are these two celebrities? एक तो सबको पता है दूसरी वाली कौन है वेरी गुड कृतिका इज वेरी स्मार्ट सो दिस इज वेरी गुड डाइनिंग स्टार ऑफकोर्स लाइक यू गाइज आर अमेजिंग यू आर ऑलराउंडर्स सो यू नो वन इज एश दैट इज ऐश्वर्या बेटर नोन एज एश एंड दिस वन इज योर Taylor Swift. This one, yeah, Sanika. She is Taylor Swift. All right. So this is your Ash and Taylor. So basically, these are your two braces. Which are these braces? Your Ash brace and your Taylor brace. The Ash brace and your Taylor brace. All right. And what do you think are these braces used for? Look at the position of Ashwarya Rai. What is she trying to stabilize with her hands? What is she trying to stabilize? Imagine the hands of Taylor Swift also here. So they are both standing like this. Very good, Dharani. Absolutely right. So that is for your dorsal lumbar. So at the dorsal lumbar junction, it is used for dorsal lumbar immobilization. So these are Ash and Taylor Swift. So here you can see again the same position of this patient as well. And you can see that it is immobilizing dorsal lumbar. So this is your Ash brace dorsal lumbar and this one is your tailor brace this is your tailor brace both of these you can see are coming in the dorsal lumbar junction this one is also coming in the dorsal lumbar junction the difference is your ash wala you know you have a cross in the ash brace and here this is your tailor tailor swift wears the brace like this okay jo collar se bhi aa raha hai shoulder se bhi aa raha hai like this so that is your taylor swift wala brace that is the taylor brace okay that's the taylor brace so in ash wala brace you will have at the dorsal lumbar junction and it will be crossing so when you write a when you write a just try and cross it okay so it's like a x so crossing wala ash the other one is taylor brace okay what is this what is this What do you think is this? ये अपना सादा सुधा है जो everyone wears in our day to day life for the back ache. This is nothing but your lumbar corset. जो हम बोलते हैं belt पहनो belt पहनो back ache है तो so your lumbar corset. This is your lumbar corset which is nothing but a belt which you can see here. So you don't have like a tailor brace something going on the shoulders. Okay. So this is just a belt around the waist. So this is basically used for back ache. This is used for back ache all right that's used for back ache what is this what is this so you have two braces absolutely right you have two braces absolutely right this is ddh because you can see what is the brace or the splint doing what is the splint doing the splint is causing abduction the splint is causing abduction at the hip 
we know that for ddh if you want to keep the femur head in position you have to do adduction or abduction it is abduction so when you see a child with the hip in abduction you know that it is for ddh okay that is very logical thing it is ddh so you have for ddh you have two splints which are von rosen splint and you have a craig splint you have von rosen and a craig splint okay so which one is this this is called as this is your von rosen splint this is your von rosen splint this is your von rosen splint and this one which you see again the hip in abduction but as compared to the von rosen splint which you see that von rosen is you know like actually when you carry a child wo jo carrier hota hai so wo hai von rosen splint jaisa and this is where you have just the thighs being abducted and they are connected this splint has a rod connecting between the two hips so that is your craig splint that is your craig splint so remember craig is c it has a connecting bar it has a connecting bar in between the two hips which was the splint that we saw which had the connection between the two shoes you had the two shoes and there was a bar connecting what was that splint name what was that splint name remember that position of the singer very good that was the dennis brown splint which was used for ctev this is your craig splint which has a connecting bar thighs in abduction hips in abduction so this is again used for ddh ddh what is the x ray view which is used for ddh from the splint itself you can remember it is your rosen's view von rosen's view or rosen view is used for ddh so x ray is also rosen's view so rosen view is used for ddh so remember it as remember it as the child you know the young child a neonate chotu uh, bachu is very very rosy so rosy baby is von rosen in babies you have ddh or cdh right so rosy baby ddh and you have craig which has a connecting bar in between the two thighs okay so we have seen the majority i think we have we are done with the uh, splints which we saw let us quickly revise let us quickly revise the various mnemonics that we saw so crammer wire you cram in emergency so emergency immobilization thomas splint and bowler brown splint thomas is for thigh th is for thigh so fracture femur bowler brown is also for fracture femur that is the thigh bowler brown how do you identify by the three pulleys it has the three pulleys aluminum splint where did we see the aluminum splint wo chota sa aluminum wala finger mein that was for finger dennis brown we saw that singer abnormal position of the feet so dennis brown we have to remember the singer with abnormal position cock up splint so cock up so wrist drop mein use karenge matlab radial nerve palsy which causes wrist drop similarly in your toe raising splint hai isme hai toe raising splint is used for foot drop which is used in common peroneal nerve injury or sciatic nerve injury then you have knuckle bender so you are bending the knuckle so it is lumbrical ka position so lumbrical is supplied by what is the nerve supply of lumbricals what is the nerve supply of lumbricals you have u and you have m so it is supplied by both ulnar and median nerve ulnar and median nerve medial to ulnar lateral to median so it is used in ulnar nerve palsy basically in claw hand claw hand this we saw toe raising is foot drop wolfman's splint as the term says it would be used in wolfman's ischemic contracture the other name is also called as turn buckle splint i did not show you the image not really important so turn buckle splint to remember when you say a b c d t and v they come together when you say alphabets so turn buckle will be used in wolfman's ischemic contracture four post collar where we saw the four post it was collar so it is used for neck immobilization aeroplane aeroplane hum haath se udate hain to brachial plexus injury ke liye ya fir axillary nerve injury ke liye somi you remember the sumo holding the neck so somi brace is for cervical spine ash and taylor ash and taylor ash is actually 
anterior spinal hyperextension. So Ash and Taylor, the position is here. So it is used for dorsal lumbar spine injury. Then you have Milwaukee and Boston. The other city is Scotland. So both of them are used for scoliosis. Your lumbar corset is used for backache. Lumbar corset is used for backache. Then we saw the Von Rosen. Then we saw the Von Rosen and the Craig splint. Both of which are used in DDH. Von Rosen and Craig splint. They are used in DDH. Right? They are used in DDH. So I hope this table which we initially saw and we had reactions like oh my god this is uh, you know very difficult has now become easy and uh, there is uh, uh, you know there is nothing much to be scared about it. I hope all of you remember the schedule for the upcoming classes as well. When are we meeting next is tomorrow 6 to 7 p.m. It's a free special class on Unacademy app FMGE or you can call it as Neat PG final punch as well. So that is your session three very very high yielding MCQs to be discussed. Plus subscribers toxicology you have day after tomorrow 6 to 7 30 p.m. 27 August. So for students who are not subscribed to an academy this is a course for toxicology. Everything has been covered with the cheat codes and mnemonics like we did in today's session. I hope all of you know the referral code to subscribe to an academy and you have many more free sessions you have on 26 you have on 28 and you have on 31st. Con Banega MD I hope all of you are aware of it. Anti-cancer drugs very very high yielding on 31st August. 29 31st September are the courses the sessions for the plus subscribers. So I'm hoping to see you all tomorrow in the free session special class FMG final punch. The link I've shared on the telegram group already. All right. Yes. So doctor happiness continuation class of biochemistry cheat codes. Uh, do let me know what exactly do you need in biochemistry cheat code so that I can work on it and uh, I will do it in uh, like we did a dedicated course on toxicology. Maybe we can do once you know crash course sort of thing for biochemistry where we'll cover the very very frequently asked topics. All right. Okay, so that's all for today guys. I hope you have uh, enjoyed the today's session and uh, please revise this and solve the MCQ so that you are done with the session today itself. I'll uh, see you tomorrow 6 p.m. in FMG Final Punch. Till then, goodbye. Take care. Keep studying, keep revising and keep winning.